So what are some comics you've never heard of that you should be reading? Well, it's a tough question to answer, but let me try. Hey there, this is Birch. Um, you know, somebody uh, said, uh, gave the suggestion, hey, you, you know, you've read a lot of comics, you should be more positive, you should suggest uh, good comics. Uh, what are some good comics out there that, that uh, I may not have heard of that I'd like to, I'd like to read? And that was an interesting, there's two parts of that statement that, um, that, that connected with me. I mean, first off, um, uh, yeah, I, I think, you know, it's easy to critique comics and to, you know, as I dissect parts of the industry and talk about what's working and what's not, it often does lead to uh, some negative places. And, and so I do need to, to remind myself to get back to, you know, focusing on some of the positive out there. But the, the meat of that question is, um, what are some things to recommend for others? And uh, that's, that's a much harder one because, the, you know, the problem is that I can read something and love it and think it's a really powerful, impactful comic that, that, um, that is a big deal for me. And, um, others, uh, you know, will read the same comic and it will, it'll have, it won't have the same effect. And that's, that's pretty common in comics. I mean, everything is personal taste. Uh, and so the trick becomes kind of seeking out, you know, figuring out what, what your thing is, what your you know, the stories you like to hear and, and like to have told is and then kind of leaning into that and finding out what those what those stories are so you know as i as i think about how to recommend comics to people um the biggest is probably just you know there's there you know, if, if i look at a particular era the one that i i often point to or the one that i think is is probably really worth um spending a lot of time and, and energy on is uh, is the 80s in terms of an era, because there were a lot of experiments being done back in that time frame that, uh, you know, in hindsight they've aged very well. I guess is the way to put it. Um, whether it's you know certainly in kind of the mainstream, there were some things being done uh, with the X Men, but everybody knows those. Those aren't those aren't hidden gems. Um, but there were a lot of uh, things being done with Epic and the line there, uh, you know, and uh, certain you know, the company was more, I think, more comfortable publishing kind of graphic novels or limited series that were really high quality. You know, the long shot limited series gave us Art Adams, but it also gave us a, a really good story. I think uh, the Punisher: Return to Big Nothing is uh, is a kind of a one shot that was a really good Punisher story, probably the best Punisher story. Uh, everybody points to the uh, Garth Ennis uh, Punisher books, and those are awesome too. But the Return to Big Nothing is probably, um, at least in my mind, the, the definitive uh, Punisher story. Uh, I think that that era of kind of the 80s and, um, and very early 90s, prior to the image revolution, but, but really the 80s, there's a ton of things out there that were just really, really incredible uh, in terms of storytelling. The, uh, the uh, Silver Surfer by Mobius um, was, was absolutely uh, an amazing story. Again, that's a definitive story uh, by that creator. I, I would I would seek out that era. I think Marvel and DC both uh, were kind of more in the minds of telling different stories, um, and and but also at the same time, I think telling very very um, powerful stories that were really core to the characters they're being told about. And so that's that's where you know in first I'd, I'd point to that era. I think you can kind of go down the list and you can take. You know, who's a character I like? Um, and then what was a run? You know, just, just in Sika run during the 80s. Uh, usually not in the main title, but but outside of it. I think that's a that's a um, an amazing place to go. Um, you know, I think there were a lot of Dark Horse comics uh, early on, again, kind of in the 90s uh, time frame, where they gave us some really... Um, some really good stories based on some of the licenses they, they had. I think there's some alien stories during that time period that are, that are really quite powerful. Um, there's, there's a number of different books that dark horse did, uh, that were, that were pretty interesting. Um, the Mike Mignola, uh, Dracula book, uh, that was kind of aligned to the movie. This had been 90, 1990 or 91. I think if, if memory serves, that was, um, an incredible book as well. Uh, that was just the art, 
just kind of off the charts, you know, wonderful. I think a lot of artists, uh, especially ones studying kind of panel design and layout, kind of page composition, um, that's that's one of those things where you pick up that book and just, you know, this this is where this is where you should be. This is where you need to get to. I think Liam Sharp has actually pointed to that book before being kind of a transformational one for him and uh, kind of how he started to think about page design and layout. But that's one to, to definitely seek out um, and look at. Uh, I think that, um, you know, uh, this one's kind of, for weirdly, it's not hyped, but uh, Top 10 is another one that is, uh, I think, really quite good. Uh, has some nice gene uh, art and uh, and is uh, an interesting kind of world that goes on there. I think that's, uh, I like comics that have a lot in them. that You can read them. They're, they're dense in the sense that there's a lot of characters, a lot of world building going on. And you can kind of put it down and come back to it a few months later, read it again, and feel like you're getting a good experience. Um, I, I was a big fan of The Boys. It's now a, you know popular, and it's a show. Um, I think the you know, Twitter a guy on Twitter, Ian, uh, posted there's a message in um, you know in 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 The Boys of uh, you know men without women or boys. Um, I, I liked that that sentiment was a good one, and it was interesting because the the series and the guy has been pummeled a lot for being kind of sexist and, you know, writing very, uh, I don't know, it, it, sexist is the wrong word, but just the, the, the guy's, the guy's been attacked for writing women in a less than optimal way. And yet, um, in this, this story that I think is going to wind up being one of his, you know, most popular stories, it's, it's going to wind up being one of the ones he's remembered by. Um, the, the main message is that, you know, people are not complete without each other kind of it. And I think there's a, there's a good message there. Anyway, um, there's, um, I, I think that, you know, from time to time, there's good runs within main comics that you can get to. Uh, there's, uh, you know, people point out the bloodstone, uh, hunt, the hunt for bloodstone or by in captain America. That was a really good, there's a couple good runs during that time period. Um, I think that, you know, it, it, it's interesting to see what ages well and what doesn't. And what I'm finding increasingly um, from collectors and people who are trying to buy comics and, <clears throat> and interested in comics is that the 80s, uh, like I said, the 80s is, is, is looking better and better and better in hindsight in terms of uh, good story quality that kind of match current sensibilities and other things. And the stuff that's aging really, really poorly is like the late 90s, early 2000s stuff is starting to look you know, much worse by comparison. Uh, especially, you know, and I, I know it's, it's a, you know, a lot of people have fond memories of the early 90s for the event and, and what it was, but if you look at some of those comics today, they read incredibly shallow. Uh, they, they look, in some cases, beautiful, in some cases not. There's a lot of very stylistic art at that time. But uh, the stories themselves are very, very shallow. And if you go back to the 80s and you, you look at some of those events, you get uh, not events, but stories, the comics, um, they're, they're better now than they were 10 years ago, if that makes any sense. They've, they've just, they're aging, they're aging very, very well. Um, I, you know, I, I'll go back and, and what I will do is I think there's a lot of, I'm, I'm kind of introducing the topic. There's a lot of really great comics out there and things that were tried. And so like one of the very first videos I did was around, uh, solo Avengers and that series. And I think, that's, you know, if you, if you, if you can go way back now, what seems like 200 videos or so, um, I will slow down at some point, just, you know, spoiler, I, I can't, I won't keep this pace up. And it's not so much about me. It's a, like, people are not able to consume anywhere close to the amount of videos I'm putting out. So that, that's fine. Um, the, 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 one of the first videos I did was around solo Avengers. And I think that's a series that you can go back and look at where you get a lot of very, you know, you know, half comic, you know, each comic had two stories in it, at least for the majority of the run. And you got a lot of really good stories, really good character driven things out of that. So, you know, that, that's an example of one. I think DC has had similar things with DC comics presents and, and other kind of things they've done in the past. Um, there, so there's, there's lots of little gems out there. I'll pull them up. I'll start doing more reviews backwards. I mean, I like talking about the current comics. I do the, uh, you know, the Batman review or the, uh, the Hickman X-Men reviews. And I enjoy doing those because I'm able to talk about contemporary current, you know, here's some things that are going on. Here's where it's going. Here's what I'm guessing. I enjoy those. 
Um, but I'm also, you know, aware that when I post them, I see that there's already 30 others talking about the same comic. And so I'm, I'm more, you know, even, even though I get, and those get the hits. I mean, the reality is, you know, I'll post a, you know, an X-Men review video, get a thousand views. I'll post the uh, Solo Avengers video, it gets 30 views. So, I mean, a lot fewer people are watching those, but those are the ones I, I should do more of. And, and I like, honestly, I like doing more because it is that here are some hidden gems you can go pick up. And who knows, maybe over time, these videos will all get more popular. And, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's not about popularity um, at, by any stretch of the imagination. I'm still kind of flabbergasted that I have uh, the amount of subscribers that I do on YouTube. Thank you. I, I don't, you know, I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully we'll, you know, make good on your, your trust by delivering you some good content. Um, but there you go. So that's kind of some, some early, an early look at some things to think about. Um, like I said, I'll do more. I'll dive deeper into this subject and, and see what else kind of we can pull out. And, you know, would love to, if you have some comments, some comics you'd like me to dive into, uh, why don't you leave me a comment? Let me know what, you know, what I can do, what I can kind of unearth and, and get into. Uh, happy to do that. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe, click the bell for notification, and most importantly, thank you for listening.